him, whatever they're going to do. Add Bobby Lackey to our prayer list. He's having issues. Anybody else we need to add or take away? Jana. Sister Jana. Got some coughing issues. And, uh, remember her in prayer. Y'all yeah. going off together? We're taking a few <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Remember Alan and Melissa and the family, they travel. Mercy. What else? We should have been lifting you up, brother, because uh, everybody I know has had them. Had a bad time. Had a bad time. Anybody else? I spoke. Well, Adam Blocker, how about lifting them up? Got one other thing I about to forget. Y'all see that? <laughs> as cre as uh, says, creation to the cross, the story of God's redemption plan. It's at Lee's Chapel, Black Light Drama, Friday, April the 2nd, 2021, at 7 p.m. Brother Jamie said he believes that's out past Jamestown out there somewhere. Don't sound right to you, Michael. I don't know. <laughs> huh. Lee's Chapel. Lee's Chapel. Lee's Chapel. Yeah, they're having a creation to the cross. Uh, you don't show that or something. Terrible. Story of it. April 2nd, 7 p.m. I think everybody's got a book. If not, look around and get a brown book. We're going to sing 106 tonight. We've got very special guests with us tonight. They're going to sing a little bit. They're going to share something with us. Uh, kind of excited me. They called me last night. I said, well, you want to do it tomorrow night? They said, yeah, okay. All right. So uh, stand with me. We'll sing 106. An old account was set.
country song that I remember singing uh, Winn Ochre Church and we had a we had a small choir but we had a lot of people we got a large choir and not many people but uh, it was uh, one that I, every time I'd sing it I think about what the words of it says then an account uh, you know, you, you think of a bank account, you think of something. But what, what that is, is when, when Jesus Christ comes to your heart and forgives your sins, he writes it down. And you can put it like putting money in the bank. You can bet on what's in there, will be there. And uh, if you notice, it says it, it was settled long ago. And that last verse, it, it, it sings out to, first three is kind of a testimony. The last one is, it's a beck and call. O sinner, seek the Lord, repent of all your sins. For thus he had commanded, if you will enter in. And then if you should live a hundred years below, ere he will not regret it. You will not regret it. It was said long ago. I pray that you have made that uh, call in an election sure of what you and, and Jesus Christ has agreed on. Because if you not, I heard something today uh, listening uh, to a preacher and uh he says, I'm not going to ask you, Are you? have you got everything right before you die? He says, I want to ask you, do you have everything right spiritually? Because, see, that don't die. And that's something to remember and something to think about. Uh, most people talk about this physical death, but you got to remember the spirit never dies. So that, that's the biggest concern. Uh, there's nothing we can do about dying physically. Because it's going to happen one way or the other, or the rapture will take place. But what we need to concentrate on is how is our spiritual condition. Tonight we have uh, Brother Clark and, and Sister Mary. Uh, they called me last night, like I said earlier, and uh, they want to share their testimony. I'm not going to rob anything from them, but I did ask them to sing two or three songs. Just so happened to do that. Uh, huh? Okay. All uh, right. But they want to share a testimony. Uh, Y'all remember back when uh, when their son Christopher was really sick with COVID. He had actually just got over something that went on at the thing, but I, I'm not going to go in that. If they want to share that, they can. Uh, but we had him on the prayer list and was praying uh, every time Sister Diane was giving us updates. As a matter of fact, she would text me on one of the bad days and said, please remember it's not looking good and this and that and the other. And uh, so they want to come and thank you and uh, listen. Uh, God's still on the throne, and uh, he still hears and answers prayers. But uh, we're going to ask him to come on. And he wouldn't come without you, Sister Mary. I don't, of course, I don't blame him. Uh, but one of my, one of my favorite song, song persons, singers, is, is her. And uh, I would like for you to. Um, but uh, if I go before her, it's perfectly all right if she'll sing in my funeral. Of course, I'll already be in heaven, and you know. But anyway, for y'all's benefit, she can sing y'all pretty song. All right. <laughs> okay. Do Would y'all sing over there? They said they could hear it better on Facebook. We're on Facebook. Now, we don't have many here. But A joy to be here. We want to do a couple songs, and we we wanted the opportunity to uh, thank everybody, the church and family, and uh, everyone that uh, prayed and supported while Christopher was so sick, and he had a he had a lot of things going on last year, and we wanted to share a few of those with you, and praise God for who He is. Amen. It's all about Jesus. <laughs> Let's get a hold of this. A flat. The holy hills of heaven call me to mansions. 
His bride across the sea, where loved ones wait and crowns are given. Oh, the hills of home are calling me, and I see. Tears are gone, and their hearts are free. And from the throne, my Savior beckons. All the hills of home are calling me, and this. Of flesh. Oh, it's just a prison. Bars of bone hold my soul. But the door. double vision so I see two microphones. <laughs>
I'm saying y'all probably know us. We're Clark and Mary Lyons. We go to Riverside Chapel Baptist Church. Uh, we'd like to thank y'all, but we'd like to thank the Lord first for touching our son Christopher. I'd like to leave you give a little background on last year, uh, last spring. Uh, well, he works at the state prison in uh, Ware County, and uh, last spring he had uh, eight, inches, eight inches of his colon took out. He was off 12 weeks with that. Then he went back to work, and it was the second week. That's when they had to ride. And uh, it was around, he said it was around 12 or 15 of them. Jumped on him, beat him, handcuffed him, stabbed him. Uh, he uh, told him they were going to kill him. Yeah, they told him they were going to kill him. And uh, but uh, our Christopher was strong as a boy. Now he, if he could have got a hold of one of them, they'd had a broke back. <laughs> but anyhow, I couldn't handle 15 on me either. But anyhow, uh, he over he went to the hospital and they sewed him up and sent him home. Uh, and then it was a week later. And eight days. He got the virus, the COVID-19 virus. And uh, we took him that Sunday, uh, Sunday evening, and uh, he was barely could breathe then. And uh, we didn't know what was in store, what was ahead of us. But we've been praying ever since he started with the prison. Him and his wife both work at the prison. And uh, we didn't know what was going to be ahead of us. But anyhow, uh, we just thank the Lord for watching over him. I'll let my wife tell you a little bit more about it, about the rainbow when we took him down there. Well, um, Christopher still uh, has some PTSD issues from the prison and uh, still uh, some breathing issues and may not actually get back to work for a good while. If you look at him, you wouldn't even think there's anything wrong with he him. He still right looks now. like that good, healthy young man. <laughs> but uh, and Clark and I both had the COVID when the prison riot occurred, so we weren't really able to get with Christopher and help talk with him and counsel him before wham, we were taking him to the hospital with COVID. But if you have your Bibles, open them to Isaiah 65:24. And please mark this chapter, this verse, Isaiah 64, chapter 25. And I'll read that or let you read that in just a minute. Um, when we took Christopher to the emergency room, we left our place. There was a rainbow that I promise you stretched from one side of the ground to the other side of the ground. It was the most beautiful, hugest rainbow Clark said that he'd ever seen in all his life. Yeah, you could count and see all the colors in it, the rainbow. It was a beautiful rainbow. And uh, every time one of us would mention it on the way to the emergency room, and it, it was uh, probably all the way to Sydney Lanier Bridge that we could see it. And every time somebody would mention that rainbow, I'd say, God's promises. Not, you know, not knowing what all we were in for. And... Uh, God's promises so we had to leave him there at the emergency room and come home and and he got sicker and sicker and sicker and uh, God brought the rainbow to my mind and I thought well the rainbow comes after the storm and God told me to read Isaiah 64 65 24 and it shall come to pass that before they call I will answer and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Is that not the most wonderful thing you have ever heard? And it shall come to pass that Mary and Clark, before you even start crying out for me not to take your son, I'm making you this promise. And, and that's what God did. That, that rainbow was one of the things that sustained us. Every time there was... Even a little glimmer of hope, we clung to it. Things like people calling, family, Diane Moe in Christopher's yard. It, ev everything counted toward God's relief in helping us. 
and uh, the, the family meeting and having prayer for him. And um, as I say, he got sicker and sicker. Praise God for his promises in the rainbow. On the 30th, he had to go on the vent. And, of course, if you're familiar with COVID, and I, and I know there are cases in, in the church and that you are familiar with it, we were so scared about him having to go on the vent, we couldn't hardly stand it. But God was using everything to help our Christopher get better. <laughs> so he, he stayed on the vent, and they couldn't wake him up. And um, all the while he was on the vent, well, before they put him on the vent, they tried blood plasma transfer. They tried blood filtering six times, and his blood kept clotting. They couldn't do it. And they finally put him on a, a new experimental drug that was uh, still in clinical trials, hadn't even been approved yet. So this was not just a, a light thing. Christopher was dying. <laughs> they had two doctors <laughs> working him around the clock on a weekend. Or according to man, Christopher <clears throat> was dying. God knew he wasn't going to die all along. But uh, So they did get him on the vent, eventually had, had to put him on the vent and... Uh, then they couldn't get him woke up. So that worried us. T Tabby stayed at the house with us a lot, Tabby, his wife, and our grandbaby. And we sat across the table from each other. We'd live from phone call to phone call. Well, what are they going to tell us this phone call? What are they going to tell us this phone call? And sometimes the news was bad. Sometimes the news drove us to prayer. Sometimes it drove us to prayer to praise because God told me all through this, you pray and you praise. You pray and you praise. God is God. Even if God had taken Christopher, as he has some I know with COVID and with other things, any time one of God's saints dies, the Bible says in Psalms, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. It, it's not a light thing with God. <laughs> but... Um, one of the hardest things for me was praying for God's will to be done, but at the same time, begging him, please don't take my son. That's one of the hardest things, and I'm not sure I even arrived. I'm not sure I made it as far as finally letting go, because I kept, Lord, of course we want your will to be done, but please don't take my son. And, and that was probably one of the hardest things realizing just how sick Christopher was. But two, like I said, the Lord told us to praise. There was a time or two I opened my back door and I just hollered out, praise the Lord. You have to let God be God. Mm -hmm. I was never angry at God through all this. I was too <coughs> intent on hanging on to him. Too intent on hanging on to him, wanting him to take care of Christopher. We had a lot of ups and downs. We got some notes here. We, we get nervous. <laughs> and along them two weeks, three weeks there, like I say, was getting bad news. And they, one of them told us the bottom of his lungs was doing dead. And, uh, they was getting like a 50-50 chance to live. And they did let us go see him. They, they told us at first that we couldn't go see him unless he was going to be get worse or die. So they did let us go see him. And we really thought at the time it was because they just calmed down enough to let us come see him. But then we realized later that I don't think they were at times expecting Christopher to live. And uh, But our hearts are so full and so thankful for the prayers. It was a journey for Christopher, and he'll be telling his story one day. It's all kind of still raw and emotional for him right now. But we wanted to share our part about God sustaining us through prayer. I mean, we cried and we prayed. and But you know what? We have lost loved ones that we don't know. Or we know some, some loved ones we don't know where they stand with God and some we know are lost God has shown me that my prayers should be just as earnest for those of my lost loved ones Amen. as they were for Christopher 
Christopher would have went on home to heaven. But the, there's a lost world out there. And we, we, need to, we need to be doing things like this. Telling what God has done for us. We serve a real Savior. I, wouldn't, I, I just wouldn't want to uh, not have a relationship with God. Even though there's times he has to whoop me. Whoop me all you want to, Lord. Just don't ever stop loving me. And I know he won't. Isn't that good to know? That there is a constant in life. A constant. I can count on God. I can count on God. Isn't that good? Like I say, even, and we are so thankful that he did not take Christopher. And I know he would have given us grace because we've lost other loved ones. But I just have to say thank you, Lord, that you didn't take Christopher. That you helped us, that the Lord helped us walk through this trial. And there'll be other trials. As long as we live, there'll be trials. But I'm glad I'm a Christian. Amen. I'm glad I got saved. I got saved when I was 12 years old, and I'll be 68 this year. I know I don't look it. But, <laughs> but um, every, this is one of the things that Clark and I have been wanting to do is to share with the churches how much we appreciate Amen. family and how much we appreciate churches. Please mark Isaiah 64. 25 or is it 65 24 65 24 and it shall come to pass that before you even call God will answer and while you're yet speaking he will hear if we look for God we'll find him Jeremiah tells us that seek me and you'll find me if you have a desire to do things for the Lord he'll let you do them Amen. and he is worthy he is worthy. And we're, we're just thankful that we're part of God's family, part of this family we feel like. And just uh, thankful for all God's done for us. Miss Shula May had a stroke uh, in last, around last March, and she's still with us. Um, Diane's just had a brand new baby granddaughter. And uh, 2020 was a hard year, but it was a good year. It was a year we lived through. And praise the Lord through. And um, Clark and I just want to be God's vessels. We, we just want to do what the Lord wants us to do. And, and you can tell who has the tendency to do the most talking. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Uh, I'd like to say one other thing. Chris went back to the doctor after, I can't remember, two or three months after. He, he spent 81 days, 81 days in the hospital. He had to learn to walk. They had to help him it get even in the bath. Eat and talk. Yeah, he, he had to learn how to, to eat, eat and, and talk. talk and he uh, had to drink. Uh, had to pass a swallowing test before they would even turn him loose to start eating. Yeah. But uh, he went back to the doctor, his lung doctor, and his lung doctor told him, "says You come to close to death as anybody I've ever seen in all his doctoring years." And he. And I, that was something. He told Christopher he was lucky, and Christopher told him he was blessed. Amen. So we Amen. thank God Christopher knows what the blessings And we, again, we thank you all for y'all's prayers. And, and, and if you know anybody that's dealing with this kind of issue, we'd be honored to chat with them, to give encouragement. Um, we're all in this together. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you all. I think there ought to be dedicated services just for what we had tonight. I mean, I get up here and try to drive people toward the cross and keep them out of hell, and and that's why. Because he is such a great God. And when it becomes so personal, I've, I've never doubted where they've stood 
y'all may not believe this, but I remember before they were a couple. Uh, of course, I was just an infant. <laughs> uh, and I, I've always, I've always loved her. And I, and even then, I said, whoever gets that lady is getting a gem of a lady. And I could also say that about her husband as well. Uh, just, just two people. Don't tell me that our God don't honor dedication, uh, sharing, sharing your talents with Him. I mean, if she if she's not honorary song leader director in heaven, I don't know who could be. But uh, thank y'all so much for coming anytime. Uh, I mean, we'd be glad to have you. I, I always think of Miss uh, Miss Mary, Sister Mary, Brother Clark. I always think of them too. We show up a lot at the same places, and usually there's a hole dug in front of us. But I always think, think of the song, Please Let Me Sing in the Choir, in the Choir. Please Let Me Sing in the Choir. It's about a story about an old man that wanted to be a member of a choir and no one because he didn't sing very well. And then one day the, what the verse goes that uh, he says, I found me a choir to let me sing. Now I'm singing in the choir. He died and went to heaven and became a choir member. And I think of Miss Sister Mary and, and them. Uh, what an honor it would be to have him in a, in a choir with me and them. And, and when we get to heaven, we will sing together. I don't sing very well. I love to sing. I got my harmony girl sitting over there, and we do all that. But one day, I do want to sing with y'all. Now, I know I'd mess you and the Diane and all that bunch up. and Yeah. Uh, but one day we will, we'll, 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 and and in harmony, not just not just in tone of singing, but the harmony of love into Jesus Christ. I I think that's what we miss. But if you ever, if you ever want to testify, I am open to quit what I'm doing to let you do that because we do a lot less praising than we ought to. The Bible tells us, let everything that has breath praise him. And he's worthy of all that. Uh, one last thought. Scripture she, she mentioned, uh, jog my memory to one. The Bible's got scriptures that, that talk about ask. And I, I preached a message one time on ASK, ASK, and it says, ask, seek, and knock. Ask, then you shall receive. And if you believe that in your heart, you know, I'm not one of them faith guys that believe, you know, I believe in God's will. But I believe that the, fair, the prayers of a righteous man can avail us much. I do believe that we can actually change God's mind. You said, well, Brother James, I, I, let me tell you, it's happened in the word of God. Where God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, I mean, destroy uh, Nineveh. Even though Jonah didn't want to go there, he went there, and the Bible says that they laid out in the streets and sat cloth and ashes and begged for forgiveness. John, God still honored what he said he would do to Nineveh. In the book of Nahum, 150 years later, he destroyed Nineveh, but the people that were there got forgiveness, and God would change his mind. That's pretty potent. When you think that you can change what is set in time, by just being loyal, obedient, and just a good servant, it happens. I was so fearful. My my son um, got together and with the Brandon County guys, and they stayed in the same rooms, and my son got to meet. Um, and I, I told him about him. They called him, I think they called him Blue or something because he's such a big old guy. And... Uh, and, uh, of course, they all wrestled and had a big time at FFA camp together. And when I told him that, you, you could see, you know, even though they're not close friends, they, they, were, they became friends up there. And you could just see the look on his face. You know, you, you couldn't believe that could happen to a, a person like him. Uh, it can happen to you. But 
we have a father that we can depend on. Anybody have anything they'd like to say tonight? I'm not going to get into scriptures. I'm not going to mess with the spirit of God. It's so sweet, and right now I'm, I could fly home. I probably will. Uh, but uh, anybody? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yep. Yep. Well, the thoughts that I would have to, to talk to people that don't know it and to our country tonight and all those that listen, what the prophet Amos said in his book when he kept trying to encourage people to follow God and do what that, he says, okay, boys, don't listen to us. He says, but I will tell you this, you better prepare to meet your God. Listen, I'm prepared to meet mine. Some people are not. I'm prepared to meet mine. I'm kind of like her. I just, the angels will rejoice when I get there. I, I can tell my wife every now and then, I says, you know, you, 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 you act like you're mad and get frustrated with me, but if I go home to be with the, the Lord, the angels are going to be happy to see me. You don't act like you're very happy today. But anyway, just cutting up. Let's stand together and let's pray together. I'm going to, Brother Clark, will you dismiss us in, in a word of prayer? And uh, thank you all again for coming, okay? Dear Father, again, we just thank you for the gift of our evening. And Lord, we thank you for the blessings we know about the mother of God. Lord, I pray and ask you just uh, bless all the names that are called by your Lord. And you know each one who comes to you. And Lord, I pray and ask you bless each one that's taken away and not touch faith in you. And Lord, I pray and ask you. Amen.